Hi, it's Jillian from Jillybean Pottery and I'm here um, to help you make some quick changes to your clay practice if you've found yourself you know, in one of two situations. Maybe you're not able to access your normal studio, maybe not access your normal tools and equipment. Um, maybe you're a mom or a dad and you have kids at home that you're now like, what do I do? <laughs> I need art projects or I need something to amuse them. How can I go forward? So um, I wanted to walk you through some basic powder tools um, that I use. I'm a hand builder and some easy swaps. If you don't have A, don't have access to your tools or B, you've never tried clay before and you want to have some tools and, and have your kids have some fun. And so I thought I'd give you some quick tips. I'm going to be doing a series of these videos and doing projects that are accessible from home. It all can be used with the tool swaps that I'm going to talk about today. So um, you can use all of these with regular clay. You can also use them with air dry clay if that is your jam and if you're a parent with kids at home or even just a person who's going crazy at home and want to try clay for the first time, this series of videos is for you. Check out your your you know handy dandy tool swaps you don't need to buy extensive tools to do any clay project and you can absolutely use air dry clay they sell it at walmart walmart's probably gonna have a run on air dry clay so maybe get there soon okay so just some easy swaps um the first tool um that i wanted to do a swap for is the wire cutter and the wire cutter is what ceramic artists use to kind of slice clay off you know the chunk of clay um, it's a very easy tool it's very clean you might not have one at home if you don't have one at home um, just know you can use any type of heavy-duty wire you can use any type of heavy-duty string um, no yarn but something tightly woven like a twine or something like that would work you can also use a pipe cleaner um, this is true <laughs> in true quarantine style we are foraging through our homes for tools pipe cleaner for the win. Okay, so <laughs> you've heard of pantry foraging for food. We are home foraging for clay tools. Okay, next up is a very common clay tool. It's called the needle tool. Um, it's a metal tool and it sounds like just what it is. It's a handle with a needle on the end. Um, if you don't have one of these, never fear. Um, there are a couple easy swaps. Um, if you are a parent, I have an easy swap that works for any age. Assuming they're, you're not worried about safety and, and kids poking themselves or cutting themselves. And then I also have a swap for those of you who are worried about younger children. So this is probably teenage and up would be my vote. But use your best judgment. You know your kids best or you know yourself best. Sometimes I put corks on my tools so I don't, you know, stab myself. So no judgment. Judgment-free zone right here. Okay, so an easy swap is a paring knife. Steal it from your kitchen drawer. You'll never miss it. You'll never, it'll never make it back there. You're gonna love clay and you're gonna always be using clay. In fact, I have a paring knife, both of these, in my tool collection for a long time. I got these at the dollar store, but again, your kitchen foraging, house foraging for tools, you can use this. You can also use, if you're worried about your kids um, and, you know, cutting with the paring knife, you can use a skewer. So these are wooden skewers. Um, a metal skewer would work too if you're not worried about the safety aspect, but metal skewers are great. They come, or wooden skewers are great. They cut, they poke things. So, so fabulous. So these are all um, options and not dangerous. Okay, so good. Um, <laughs> um, another non-dangerous tool. So the wire, the, the pin tool, for those of you who don't know, we'll be using these um, in the projects in my upcoming videos which what you don't know is we use this to poke air bubbles, which you can use the, this for, we use this to cut clay, and hence why the paring knife is an option. Um, we use it for so many things. You can also, um, just for the cutting aspect of it, you can use a plastic knife. You don't even have to be a real, real knife, it could be a plastic knife, so there you go. Okay, um, other things that are good to use, um, a lot of potters like to use scoring tools, and they use their needle tool for this, or these other tools. I my Go to scoring tool is this metal rib with teeth. Again, you may not have access to this. If you don't, no worries. You can score with your skewers or you can score with a fork. Forks, you know, it doesn't have to be a plastic fork. It could be a metal fork, but if you're worried about kids, again, plastic fork is great. Less, you know, if it breaks or something like that, no harm, no foul. 
some people use toothpicks but I find those break and they just go everywhere they're too they're too small I'm more pro plastic fork than I am toothpick okay but you might have toothpicks so more power to you if you have toothpicks if you're not worried about the danger um, this is also an option um, you can get a wine cork you can get some sewing needles I only had one that I found <laughs> My forging was not quite so successful here. And you stick the not sharp end into the cork and you do a couple across the top. Great scoring tool as well. Again, not for kids, but you know, for adults, if you're looking for something like that. All right, a lot of things that people love to use are ribs, smoothing ribs. Um, rounding and smoothing, you know, super important. And there's some really, you know, you might not have these nice flexible ribs or wooden ribs. So easy to replace, um, one. You can use a plastic or even metal, although I think plastic is a little bit easier. Um, uh, doesn't stick so much to the clay. Scraper. In fact, I, you know, if I'm smoothing large areas, I use a plastic scraper anyways. So, plastic scraper. You can also make your own ribs with um, disposable uh, or plastic cheap uh, placemats. Or I know so many of you somewhere have a credit card offer that you received in the mail, junk mail, and they give you that fake card, you know, with it. You can cut those up. You can cut up, I cut up my grocery store discount cards because you just use your phone number at <laughs> the thing. So you can use these and cut them in any shape that you want. You can even cut them and use them to score. You can cut them in different ways to score, so that's easy. So those are all, you know, super easy swaps. Okay, another thing that is a common tool is this one. This is a wooden modeling tool. They come in different shapes and sizes. Um, it's for use smoothing, sometimes for cutting. People use them for all sorts of things. Um, they're very versatile. Um, easy swap is a tongue depressor. And not that I would recommend necessarily depleting your emergency supply, but you can often find these in your first aid kit. <laughs> um, but don't be, don't be, don't be dumb about it. Don't take the only one. Make sure you have, you know, or you might have this for craft projects for kids and things like that. You should be able to get these in Walmart. So if you had two in your kitchen, your house foraging didn't turn up anything, you can get these in Walmart. Or you can use a coffee stirrer. This is a wooden coffee stirrer. Um, not those plastic ones, but the nice wooden ones. Uh, a little bit skinnier, but they work. These you can get at Walmart. So Walmart's still open. You can get these at Walmart. No big deal. You can get skewers at Walmart too. Okay. So, um, some super easy swaps. Other things, if you're going to be hand building, right, um, coiling, pinching, I'm going to be doing a great pinch um, pot mug demo um, coming up next after this video. And so, you know, stay tuned for that. Subscribe to my blog. I think it's down in the corner. Subscribe to my blog and you'll get an RSS feed email when it posts or subscribe to my YouTube channel and you get notified as well when it posts. Um, I post in both places. Um, the one nice thing about seeing it on my blog, um, if that's where you're finding me, or if you're finding me on YouTube, heading over to my blog, which is jillabeampottery.com, click blog, on the, along the top, is I give all these tool recommendations and where to buy them and stuff like that in there. So if you forget what I said or you want like a list you can print out and you don't want to have to take notes while I'm talking, that's the place to go. I can't do that so much on YouTube, so definitely check that out. Um, other things that are good to have, if you're going to be rolling slabs, um, so, you know, we're going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a pinch pot demo where you don't even need this next tool, but if you're used to having a slab roller or you're used to throwing and on the wheel, on the potter's wheel, or you just have kids and you need something, you can absolutely steal the rolling pin from your kitchen. Um, clay cleans up very easily, so I know parents might be concerned about that. It does clean up. Use nice soap and water. You can put these things in the dishwasher. I've totally put mine in the dishwasher before. I do, because <laughs> I use mine a lot. I do have separate ones, personally, because I have a home studio, so I have it stocked here. But um, you can absolutely steal your kitchen one, and it'll be okay, okay? You can also, sometimes this is a pizza roller. This is for pizza. Great clay tool as well. So again, you might have something like this also. 
um, dollar stores should have things like this too. These little bands, which are not a requirement, not a requirement at all, by the way, um, are for rolling out dough thickness, certain thicknesses. So I use mine to roll clay thickness. Um, if you're concerned, if you have little kids, just let them roll clay. Don't worry about how thick it is. Don't worry about how thin it is. If it's perfect, it's not the end of the world. They're just exploring their creativity. If you have older kids or if it's you, you may want to follow some of these tips. Um, you can get two wooden sticks. Um, I have these ones that are a little thicker. I have these ones that I got um, at Home Depot that are longer. I like them because they're longer. And you can also use two rulers, okay? Two rulers side by side. And what you do is you put those side by side with the clay in between. And so then when you roll, you can't go any thinner than those pieces of wood, right? It stops the clay from getting too thin. And so those can that can be really nice. And like I said, it's more, you know, I would worry about it more if you're talking about an older child or yourself, because um, even thickness is, is absolutely a, um, you know, a, a thing to help the piece be more structurally sound. It'll dry more evenly and things like that. But it's more about having fun. And you know what? I freehand roll clay all the time, right? And you're going to get pretty close. It's not, it's not going to be, you know, so, um, you know, so urgent and so important. Um, if you don't have any of these tools and don't have something to measure your thickness with, never fear. You, everyone has a pinky finger. Everyone has a pinky finger. Okay. Pinky finger thickness is what you're going for. Okay. So you, <laughs> you have your clay, you're going to put your fi pinky finger like this up against it works for kids too works for kids too don't doesn't matter that their pinky finger is smaller and you can see is it too thick or too you know it should be about pinky finger thickness okay whether it's a kid's pinky finger your pinky finger immaterial is just a way to gauge okay so pinky finger thickness is important everyone's got a pinky finger a lot of people have two if you don't have a pinky finger you can use a pencil no big deal okay people without pinky fingers use a pencil okay so <laughs> Some people might not have pinky fingers. You gotta be important, you know, it's important to note these things. Okay, the other thing that you might wanna do is you're thinking, okay, I have my kitchen table, right? Maybe I don't really have a place. Where am I gonna roll the clay out? Where am I gonna work? What am I gonna do? Okay, so if you have a kitchen table or some other surface and it's not just dedicated to clay, you're gonna wanna protect it. And so the easiest way to do that, we all have these, okay? Unless you don't get mail, then I don't know what to tell you. But maybe you can use some plastic um, garbage bags. But what is even easier, I think, is newspaper. So these are those ads that come in the mail for grocery stores and things like that. And you can, you know, a lot of times we just throw these away, save them the next couple times they come in and lay them out on your tabletop. And, you know, a lot of times we look through these and throw them and discard them. So this is a great way to reuse them. So definitely save those. Um, you also will want to most likely have something on top of the newspaper so the newspaper is spread out just to protect the surface. Um, it's not what you want to roll the clay on necessarily. You're going to want to use something. I personally, um, and if you're in a studio setting, you're probably used to using canvas. Um, you can get this cut in different lengths and things like that. Any heavy duty fabric will work. If you have an old pair of jeans, cut up the jeans. You know, if that's not big enough, um, that's okay. Or maybe you don't have any of those things. Again, okay. You can use any kind of piece of wood. This is just, you know, a piece of wood that's been cut. And um, you can see one side is maybe kind of shiny and one is rough. You can use this. You can even use um, a piece of cardboard cut up. You can use this as a heavy duty, um, art paper. It's like almost like cardstocky. You just want something a little bit sturdier than the newspaper to roll clay on, to use as a work surface so that the clay doesn't stick to the table and whatever surface is underneath. So you want something, things to keep in mind, criteria to use, something that's a little bit porous that the clay will release from, um, like a fabric or a, and not a silky fabric. So if you have like a heavy duty cotton or something, that's gonna work, yeah, it's gonna work. And, you know, use that over the newspaper you've laid out and you're gonna be just fine and you'll be, you'll be great. So um, those are some really quick and easy um, 
tool swaps that I hope you take advantage of over the next few days. Definitely go foraging in your house just like you would for dinner in your kitchen and pantry. Um, instead, this time forage for some clay tools. And tune in in a few days time, I'm gonna be doing a pinch pot demo um, and we're gonna be making pinch pot mugs. So very little tools required, you do need hands. Any size hands works. One hand, two hands, whatever. And we're gonna make a cute little mug, okay? So see you guys next time, thanks.